Welcome to a new test and teardown video. Look at this fantastic function generator. It's from Exact, a type 251. So this is a table version. There's also a 19 inch rack version. Look at this picture I found on the internet. It looks a little bit like this. But again, quite different here in, in the middle. We got a lot of other inputs and outputs and switches and stuff. But other than that, it's more or less the same unit, isn't it? Say, look at this amazing quality. It is just in mint condition. So, as far as I can see, we can, we can trick in turn. Or extern? How is that? So this is only one wave? I can't wait to figure out if this is really true. But look at this. So this is the multiplier of the output frequency. So if we put this dial here in one, so this is one cycles per second, and multiplier is one, so this means one hertz, right? So if I go down here, 0 0.1 hertz, 10 millihertz, one millihertz, really? And then, okay, no big deal, this is 10. No, this is 1000, and that will be 10,000, so 10 kilohertz. So one millihertz to 10 kilohertz, whoa. So here's the output section. It seems like you get all the different outputs here at the same time uh, via these uh, five banana jacks here. Square, triangle, sine, ramp, cosine. So you can select the different output and then it will come here as well. At least this is what I think. And then you've got an attenuator and a DC offset you can put on top of the output you got here. At least this is what I think. I have no idea yet how old this is. I can't really find a lot on the internet, so I'm so sorry about that. What I do see through the chassis, whoa, look at this super, super nice design of the chassis. I totally love this, the way that this is made. Isn't it it's just beautiful? Look at that. And I see quite a lot of tubes. And I guess this will be the main transformator and uh, probably you can't see this on the camera. Oh, that suck. I, okay, let's take off the lid, okay? I, I gotta show you this. Oh, how should I have known that? So the screws, they got this kind of locking mechanism. So when you unlock the screw, there is a little thing here that kind of hold it from turning all the way around. So that means you're not supposed to continue to unscrew. Just so you know, they made it so smart and stuff. And if you wonder where is the fourth of them? Well, that was before I figured this out. So now I need to find the missing part and I need to, damn it. Okay, so this is the internal parts. Whoa, it is full of a what? Really? What is that thingy with the little antenna here? Doing, doing. That can't be good. And a little PCB with two other transistors on the on the trimmer internal trigger thingy. I really don't like this antenna wire here on the transistor and those are really really old transistors so this is definitely a what a more professional mod here and a very very funky mod okay we got all the nice tubes probably gonna put them nice and straight so this will make it run much more accurate nah. And here's the power supply. See, this is the voltage regulator tube. 
and here's the high voltage is probably regulated and this is definitely why I got this big pen toad or something like that right oh, wow really really old style sprig capacitors like three in one capacitors and oops what is that a little mod or a repair ooh Ooh, I need to lift this up. You gotta see this. <laughs> Don't you just... <laughs> I can't stop laughing. This mod is just absolutely fantastic. Look what they're doing. So they're using a fuse socket as a... What? Isolating standoff holder thingy for some capacitors. So it's probably... They're probably replacing some of the faulty capacitors here. But isn't this just super duper nice? Oh, and we also got some transistors as well. Uh huh. Nice. So this is one of those bastards. <laughs> A mix between tubes and transistors. How can you do that? This is this is just wrong. Either do it all the way, or don't. What is that? A yai. So we've got a... what is that? Look at that wire. It's like hanging here and we got some diodes that's been hanging. What the heck is that? That is not good. So this is how all the different rectifiers are made. With flying, hangling, dangling, trend diodes and stuff. I really don't know if I like this kind of diode up in the free air hanging like that. It just don't look like we're done yet. Isn't it just funny? But what I really love about this case is this the sides. Is this is just one casted solid piece of metal and the handle as you can see here is just one solid stick your fingers in this oh i can show you here wow that is super super nice smooth feel i kind of like that a lot so this is the frequency selector lots of adjustments a lot of different decks and stuff probably what we're looking at here will be several oscillators running in parallel or in sync or something like that. It looks a little bit like it because we've got five different wave outputs. I gotta have a look at all this at the same time. Square, triangle, sine, yada, yada, yada. Isn't that just nice? And you know what? I can actually show you all those signals at the same time. Yep, we can do that. What, 1 millihertz to 10 kilohertz? And this is a 19... What, 1960-something? What is that logo? I can't even remember I've seen this logo before. Really? That is a... Normal ECF-80 tube. Well, that is one cute logo. Hmm. And this is the same. Those are all the same. What is... Did you see it? That. Ugh. Why? Why? Oh, we have... Ew! Another one! Really? Why do you do this to me? I want tubes and only tubes, you know? 
So this is the bottom view. And where have we seen those terminal blocks before? I think it's a Fluke and Tektronics. They're using these as well. They, I think there's actually a patent on the design of these. So it's a very, very special design. And look what they did here. Handwriting. Where they are. This is the number and the open. K or OM or 07 and whatnot. And yeah, look at the diodes here. How this is done. I don't know exactly about this design. Somebody got a brilliant idea about the plastic tubes and they're screwed in here with a big screw that kind of fits in the end. And then they just stick these through and then bend them. So this is just a way to put diodes, see? This is a freely move, moving parts. But why is this diode then going to this and then up here instead of just going straight over to that one? This is a little bit extra funny, make it complicated kind of thing, right? But look what I found down here. I don't know if you can see this. This one. See? A loose piece of metal. Is this good? Is this like really good? No. I hope this fell through the chassis and just landed somewhere. And this is why it's important to um, not do your electronic work near stuff with open chassis holes. I mean, really? And that is the power supply. This is high voltage capacitors and bad stuff. It's going to happen if I didn't see that. Well, well, I think it's uh, time to power this up and see if there's any more sparks and smoke in this one. The more I look at this beautiful unit, the more funny things I see. How about this one? So this wire is uh, bended like this, just to hold the tip of this neon bulb. Isn't that just beautiful? Super cute detail. I love it. Let's just try and power this up and see what happens. 120, ooh, 200 watts, really? Ooh, 120, 100, oi. Look at the scope. I was ex expecting something a little bit. So, uh, yay, look at that. Hallelujah. And what if I, see, I, I actually got this up, I'll put here. So that means there's, yay. We got output. Oi, 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 did you see that? Smoke, 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 and blitzy, blitzy. Oh, we got smoke. Yeah, not burn the house down. Oh no, we got sunshine. So, I don't know if this is on the video, but <laughs> we got some sparkling um, light sparks out of this resistor. And we got a black dark thingy. But hey, it actually worked for a few seconds. Damn it. And, it and Nay, 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 nay. Only a little bit of smoke. No big deal. Oh, this is actually quite funny. I've been looking at the video, the previous video clips, and this a broken, cracked, or blown up resistor was there all the time. I just didn't see it. So now I've replaced it with another one. So here's the th trick. I was very, very lucky. I'm actually able to pick up the color codes. Oh, annoying. Uh, the color codes of this resistor, as you see here, brown, black, black. And of course that is 10 ohm, right? One, 
is one zero and then no zeros. So that is 10 ohms. But if you don't know that, all you have to do is find another one that is exactly the same color codes like that one and just measure it with your own meter. So that is a good trick if you are having doubts with uh, resistors. This is a tiny one and that one was a big one, but the color codes on the systems, that's exactly the same. All right, resistor changed. Uh, let's try and power it up again and see if there's any more kaboom. I better have the camera ready. So that's a 200 watts. It's quite a lot of inrush current. And uh, yeah, it's exactly the same settings and it's doing the same warm up sequence. And I am having a look at uh, this resistor. Is there any shiny, shiny colors in this? Not yet. Maybe we should turn off the light. We see all the shiny tubes and all that is absolutely fantastic. It's a beautiful red light from that one. This is supposed to be the sign output. Okay, so this is a quite a long warm up sequence. Okay, we got one. Oops, be careful not to touch. Okay, we got one kilohertz. So far, so good. This is a little bit of a... Yeah, you see? This is what it liked. It liked to be punished a little bit. So that was one kilohertz, 10 and 100. Super duper, that is fine. Yep, that is great and good. And that is 10... So here is a little fun fact. Of course it worked all in the higher frequencies. So how are you going to test this? So this is 1000 of a hertz. Are you starting to think thinking about this now? Because you better how are you going to do that? <laughs> All right, so you're going to take your scope. You're going to dial it into. Why can't I show you guys this? 100 seconds per divisions. So if there's 100. Hello. Could you just sh thank you? OK, so you've got 100 seconds per division and you got. 10 divisions on your screen. So that is 1000 seconds. How long is it going to take you to sit here and wait for this acquiring weighty weighty? Well, let's let's press stop here, okay? <laughs> this is absolutely crazy and it still works. So this is one milli hertz sine wave and the reason why this looks like this is I, th I think it's because when people walk up and down here and the door is open and and stuff like that but can you imagine the time this this takes this is 100 seconds per division and we got 10 divisions right so this is a thousand second so this is 16 minutes for this sweep and obviously, I just turned this uh, machine on. Oy, oy, oy. This is nice and warm. I could probably fry some sausages on the top of this grill. <laughs> it's 140 watts. As you can see here, it is nice and warm. Oy, oy, oy. We got a lot of tubes in this thing. Well, that was a lot of fun to see that. So we've got a little bit of a noisy, noisy things. Maybe I can even go slower on this scope. Yes, I can do 200 seconds. I can do 500, 1, 000, okay. 1,000 seconds per division. So that is 10,000 seconds. Okay, I would never ever have the patience to do that. 
but I think it is required to get quite a few uh, full waves on the screen before the frequency counter here will work and I actually don't think the automatic frequency counter will be able to work at any frequencies under 2 Hertz uh, let me wait and see if that is possible I don't know if you can see this let me see if I can show you 200 seconds per division so this is the sine wave in the slowest and yeah it is not able to show the frequency let me see if I can make it read it with the measure features hang on file time rise time measure how about measure the frequency yeah I can of course I can measure the frequency hello one milli hertz of course we can do that so yeah let's try and see how the other outputs go but I'm a little bit tired of this so this was 200 se uh, milliseconds uh, uh, I mean 200 seconds la 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 tiny 10 of them 2000 seconds that is uh, 33 minutes my god so that is definitely acquiring slow so let's go um, faster okay and let's crank this up do, 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 doing. all the way to one so this is 100 Hertz one kilohertz okay let's go fast how is that done really okay so this is how it is this is how it looks exactly the same amplitude i guess that's nothing to do So I think this is going to be one of the last clips from this fantastic function generator. Have a look at this, what I'm doing here. I told you I was able to measure all five signals at the same time. Of course I'm cheating a little bit. I got 16 digital channels and this is just one of them. And one of them is indeed a square wave. So let me just show you. So you see the red one is the digital channel. If I move one of the add analog sig signal C, this is the purple one. If I move this to the square wave, you see it's the same as the right one. So that is absolutely fair. Then I can move this to the triangle and then show you all the signals. The fun thing is this one was supposed to be the cosine and this one is the sine. So the cosine output is yeah okay it is sort of right but it's not right either right so let me move the frequency slower and let's see if it's no it is not so there is a problem with the cosine stuff in here uh this is probably a capacitor or something that is oh yeah look at that okay see in this range i can't get cosine to work and then it goes slower so there's definitely a component that is not right because now look at that now I got my cosine and it is definitely working let me show you it is yes it is ha ha so there is definitely some kind of stuff that is not absolutely perfect but yes I am quite happy it is all right and working so here's a funny thing about the different oscillators. Look at this, the ramp down here, how it is now in lock and in phase with the other four signals. So what happens? Oh, do you see that? See here it changes where it triggers. And so that now it's not triggering at the same spot every time. Oh, and now again, it is, look at that. There's a long, dead area and then when it goes too long then what happens it figures out oops look at that isn't that funny and now 
it goes good again. So there's definitely something with the timing. And now this one is the cosine. And here's also a dead. So there's also a re-trigger thing. And now it goes really bad. So there is... I think this is definitely something to do with the design of the way that the different systems, they are locked to each other.